Hey everyone, Jill here. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. It's another gloomy rainy day here and so obviously I'm not doing a lot on the farm. So I am inside in the kitchen. Uh, this week is supposed to rain all week and so I have really tried to map out some of those things that I can make ahead in bulk, throw in the freezer just for quick meals down the road. And so today I'm going to be making a sourdough bagel. My kids absolutely love these. They're perfect to just spend a gloomy day or maybe a Saturday morning making a bunch of these. They freeze well, then we'll pull them out, just pop them in the oven, and then they make easy breakfast ideas. Or I love to put some cream cheese and some dates, some spinach, and make a really good sandwich with them. So super, super versatile. You can do any sort of seasoning that you want. You can have, you know, sweet cinnamon and raisin bagels for in the morning, or maybe you could do an everything bagel seasoning for lunchtime, just super versatile. So let's get started making these everyday bagels. Uh, first up, we're gonna do the first rise. We're gonna let that bulk ferment, and then in the morning, we'll wake up, shake, and bake them. All right, so let's get started making this. You are going to need an active sourdough starter. So I have got Otis here behind me. You can find Otis in the Whispering Willow shop in the description down below. And so I went ahead and fed him. Um, you can see that I actually fed him yesterday. He rose all the way up and fell back down. Now, this isn't always ideal, but when it comes to something like a bagel, it's really not that big of a deal. And I don't need a lot of active starter. I think I need like 50 grams or something. So I know that I've got at least 50 grams here and just in case I went ahead and fed a second one so I knew that I would have enough to kind of double this recipe if I wanted to. So you're going to need your active starter, you're going to need flour, water, salt, um, and some sugar. So let's get started. First up you're going to need a large bowl. My favorite bowls are from Old Dog Pottery but any bowl that you have will be fine. Pyrex, glass, stainless steel, doesn't matter. You are also going to need a digital kitchen scale. Now I get asked all the time, why is this recipe in grams? I need it in cups and ounces. And unfortunately, just the way it works with sourdough, um, dating back from way back when they started making sourdough, they've always worked in the gram metric. Now you can take a recipe and figure out the conversions, but I have found that it's much easier just to buy a kitchen scale. They're very inexpensive. I think this one was like 15 bucks. It's lasted me a really long time. Just grab yourself a kitchen scale. It's gonna make your life so much easier instead of trying to convert all these different recipes. So bowl, starter, ingredients, and a scale. That's about all you need.
Alrighty, so now I'm gonna let this rest for about an hour. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna put it on the you know counter with a little bit of flour, work it into a really good bowl, and then it's gonna do its bowl cries. This will go anywhere from about eight to 10 hours, but ultimately you're just wanting it to double. Good morning everyone. It's the next morning. I have let my bagel dough rest overnight. I needed to kind of slow down my fermentation a bit and so I just popped it in the refrigerator. That's always something you can do and it will be perfectly fine. So I'm going to grab it from the refrigerator. We're going to throw it on the surface and start making our actual bagels. Alright, so what we're going to do is roll out our dough onto a floured surface. I like to be generous with the flour so that nothing sticks. The goal is just to get it into a nice rectangular shape. This doesn't have to be perfect. You are wanting to at least get enough for eight equal parts though, so that's important. Now you're gonna take your bench scraper and just cut this into eight equal parts. Now you want to have a silicone mat onto a baking sheet. If you do not have a silicone mat, that's totally fine. Just make sure that you grease your sheet that you're working with. All right, what you're going to do here is just grab the ends, pull them and fold them together until they form a ball. Once you've pulled the ends together, Turn it over.
Now we're going to let these rest for about 20 minutes. This is just gonna relax the gluten and then we'll start our next stage of working with them. While I have the bagels resting, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the seasonings that I am going to be making. Um, one of the favorites in our household is everything bagel. Uh, this is super versatile. You can put cream cheese and an egg and it can be a good breakfast bagel or you can beef it up and use it for a lunch or a dinner option if you need to. And so for me, we always make a ton of the everything bagel, so this is gonna be half of them. And then we're gonna do one that is a garlic. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add an egg to a bowl, cause I'm gonna egg wash all of these bagels, but I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of minced garlic in here and wash about half of them. That garlic's really gonna caramelize. Again, this can be great for breakfast. My kids love salty, garlicky things, so I know that they're gonna like that. But if you are making these specific for your kids and they like, you know, a cranberry raisin or maybe they like a blueberry, there's so much versatility. For my kids, they choose savory over sweet all day long. So I know that they're not gonna gravitate to a blueberry bagel for breakfast. They're gonna grab something salty or savory and that's what we're making them. So I am literally building out my recipe for how my family's going to use it. And I really recommend that you guys do that as well. So all I'm gonna do here is crack my egg Add a little bit of garlic and then beat it really well. And then I will just set this aside. I did make up a separate egg wash for this because I don't want any garlic in my everything bagel seasoning. But I just take some sort of plate and dump your seasoning on. Now you can do this with any of the seasonings of your liking. I just find that it's best when you get the bagels out of the water just to throw them in here, coat them really good. And this seems to be a really easy option for me. So there we have it. I will set this aside and wait till our bagels get done. All right, so here comes the fun part, guys. Now we get to actually poke the holes and make our bagels. So this is gonna be really close up. I'm gonna show you guys what's going on. But I've made bagels a lot in my day. I've made a lot of really unsuccessful bagels. So some of the tips I'm gonna give you real quick is always stretch your hole a lot bigger. So you're gonna take your index finger and just go straightly down. I like to just give it a couple swirls, but then you're gonna take both of your hands and really start to stretch this out. But once you finish this process, we're gonna let it rise a second time for around 20 minutes. So that hole's gonna shrink up. Then if you get ready to bake it, it's gonna shrink even more. So I would definitely recommend over stretching it knowing that it's going to shrink um, because that's kind of what the bagel is, right? <laughs> when you think of a bagel, it's got that good uniform hole in it. Um, so that's something that we are trying to achieve here. So the great thing about this recipe is that you're able to prepare the next step while the one step is going on, right? So I've got my bagels resting. Now I'm gonna come over to the stove and I'm going to fill up a pot of water. Um, ideally, you would use a much bigger pot than this. However, all of ours are designated right now to the compost. So I'm only gonna be able to do a couple bagels at a time, but that's okay because I'm doing kind of a smaller batch than normal. So fill it up. 
Now I'm going to add some honey, about 20 grams to be exact. I've done this often enough that I can kind of just eyeball it. Um, that's exactly the same ratio I used in my focaccia recipe. So I know about how many of my little honeycomb uh, stirs here I need to equal 20 grams. And you're gonna stir it really well and just go ahead and turn it on and let that honey start to dissolve. Meanwhile, you can already be preheating your oven to around 425 degrees. And then by the time this gets boiling, your oven gets preheated, then you should be done with your second rise on your bagels. So let's just talk about the elephant in the room. This is a lot of stinking steps, you guys. I totally understand that, I recognize that. Some of you guys may even be asking, why do I not just go to the store and buy this in bulk? And honestly, you can. Um, for me, I really love from scratch cooking. My family absolutely loves these bagels. I firmly believe that they taste better than store-bought, but this is not one of those things that I'm just whipping out, right? It is a make ahead. You can make a lot, which is typically what I do. I make several batches of bagels. I put them in the freezer like I'm telling you guys about because I don't want to have to be making bagels every week. It's a process, it takes time, so you have to think ahead of time, and that's really what I found with all my things. For my daily loaves, I'm making several loaves at a time, freezing it, putting it in the freezer, pulling it out as I need it, and I think that that works best with these bagel recipes as well. If you can plan a long weekend, like for me, it's rainy all week, so I knew I wanted to get some bolt baking done inside because there wasn't a whole lot I could get done outside. And so if you think ahead and you plan ahead, I think it will be worth it. That way you just have a bunch of reserves in the freezer, but you're not having to worry about making bagels every single week. All right, you guys, I've got some bagels back here boiling. So you're gonna want them to float to the top. That's how you know that your water is at the right temperature. And then you're just gonna let them, you know, boil for about 30 seconds on each side. Then I'm going to transfer them to my baking dish over here. Wait until they're, you know, cool to touch, like still hot, but where you can manage them. I'm gonna put the egg wash on. I'm gonna dip them in my seasoning of choice. We'll do this to all of them and then we'll get ready to bake them. Alright, now we are going to pop these in the oven for about 20-25 minutes. This is definitely going to depend on your range. I have a very fast hot cooking range, so I'm probably going to set a timer for about 15 minutes, check on it, and then flip them and put them back in. So, let's get to baking. All right, you guys, the bagels are officially out of the oven. They smell and look 
amazing. So I'm going to cut into this garlic one and try it. You do wanna make sure that you're using a serrated knife. It's just gonna make cutting a lot easier. Check out the inside. These look incredible. The rise on them was perfect. So these turned out absolutely perfect. If you've been thinking about making sourdough bagels, wait for a long weekend, wait until the holiday break, maybe, you know, rainy days like I'm doing and get in your kitchen and make them. I do encourage you to try it though because it does taste so much better that you might be surprised and you might be willing to incorporate that into just your you know monthly routine. Make a bunch of these, freeze them, pull them out as you need them. But thanks for hanging out with me as we made these homemade sourdough bagels and I'll talk to you soon.